What is going on guys? Bangalore here coming back at you with another video today doing another MLB 18 the show franchise rebuild this time featuring the San Diego Padres. I would invite you to hit the subscribe button if you're new. I don't usually ask for likes so I'm not going to. That's just, you know, that's me asking for likes without doing it. You guys are quick. You guys caught that. Uh, anyway, today we are rebuilding the San Diego Padres. Of course, you see their affiliates there in AA and AAA. Frightening names. The Chihuahuas strike fear into any opponent. And of course, the San Antonio Missions, where uh, our mission is to actually make this team successful. All right, there is a playlist, by the way, for all MLB 18 The Show franchise rebuilds uh, that you guys can find somewhere on the channel. And I'll catch you up to speed if you didn't watch the last one. Marlins Rebuild was the first one I did. I'm getting better progressively as we go through these, I hope. This will be my second one. And it didn't necessarily go so well in the fact that we didn't make the playoffs. Even though the team was stacked. You guys can watch that and you guys can see what happens. Even though I just told you. Uh, but I got to turn off GM contracts so I don't get fired like I did last time. Again, go watch that one. Spoiler alert. I've already told you all of them. Um, but yep. All I'm going to do is turn off GM contracts. Budget's going to stay on. Things like that. To make this uh, realistic-ish. Although, I'm going to be doing whatever I want. So anything the game allows me to do, as far as trades go, as far as signings go, I'm going to do it all. And this Padres team, I got to say, I think it's kind of fun. Like, you think about the Padres, and maybe you're a Padres fan watching this. Our team's the best. Like, you're fucking, you're not correct. Um, but what I will say is that this team has a ton of potential. And they have some really, really solid players. Now, what are we going to hold on to in terms of players that we already have? I'm not sure. Of course, this is a team that went out, signed Eric Hosmer. Brad Hand is emerging as one of the top closers in baseball. And, you know, Denilson Lamette in real life, unfortunately, got injured this year very recently. I think he has to have Tommy John, which sucks because he's young and he's talented. But, you know, for us, we don't have to worry about that. Joey Lucchese is playing really well in real life. So, I mean, we're in a good spot with a lot of these players. It's about development. We're going to trade a lot of these players. They have a very, very deep farm system. Cal Quantrill is very good. Mackenzie Gore is very good. Look at the top 50 pitching prospects with high potential. I mean, really what it comes down to is Anderson Espinosa is the worst of the four, and he only has B potential, which is, um, I'm not exactly sure what it is. He is 65 overall. He's so only 20 years old. He has 89 potential. That's, that's almost an A, uh, if you guys are students of math there. So the farm system is really, really good. Going to relief pitchers, I guess our best one is Carter Caps, and he's okay. Probably keep him around. I'm not really sure. Any other good pitching prospects in here? No. Closer is, of course, Brad Hand, who has C potential. He's as good as he's going to get. As far as catchers goes, we have uh, Austin Hedges will be my catcher of the future, it looks like. Already very stout defensively. And then we'll look to maybe move on from AJ Ellis. And Luis Campusano looks like he could be really good as well. Uh, as well as the other Luis Torrens. And then we have another AJ. This one has no dots in his name. All right. I don't know what to say about that. I got Eric Cosmer as our starting first baseman. Josh Naylor is our main prospect here. B potential. We're looking at, you know, A and B potential for the main one. Alan Cordoba is a really solid player. Uh, he'll likely get brought up at some point during this. We also have Carlos Asuaje playing at the MLB level already. Maybe look to eventually start him over Corey Spangenberg. Chase Headley is the veteran third baseman back with the Padres. And then, of course, we have Ch uh, Christian Villanueva and Hudson Potts behind them. We'll see what happens there. And then this is really where we're deep. Shortstop. Freddie Galvis is the starter. He's been playing pretty well in real life. Uh, and then, aside from Dusty Coleman, who's a complete disaster, we have Luis Arias and Fernando Tatis Jr., Two very, very good prospects, and even Gabriel Arias uh, behind them. So this is a very, very deep farm system. Going to left field, Travis Jankowski, I thought he was with the team right now. I guess he's not, but he'll eventually come up. We've got Jose Perilla out there now. Center field, we have Manuel Margot, ton of potential on him. Franchi Cordero uh, as well. In right field, Will Myers, basically, he is you know a first baseman that plays the outfield because we have Eric Osmer now. And then Hunter Renfro. He's young-ish, has a ton of power. We'll see if we can develop him a little bit more. I'm not sure really what we're going to do with him. Might look to trade him. And it's a decent team. I think in this one, we're really going to focus on the farm. 
and uh, using that to maybe get better players. I'm not sure. It's going to be a lot of development. My first trade, I'm going to be trading Hunter Renfro and Christian Villanueva. They're decent players, but we're also getting a very decent player in Luis Robert uh, from the White Sox. I was actually watching uh, some highlights of him. He's got some pop off the bat. He really does. He's going to be in the outfield. He's going to help us out there. The outfield right now, it's interesting, right? There's some players. I don't really know, you know, who's the future there besides Manuel Margo. I think Will Myers would be better served off the team, if I'm being honest. Uh, but, you know, Luis Robert adds a lot to our organization. Now, his numbers are not great, admittedly, with his, this particular version, even though in real life he's got some power. Here, he's not so much. But he's a developmental player. Only a 61 overall right now. And maybe we'll play him at AAA. What's his potential exactly? It's an A, which is fantastic. That's where you want it. 95 potential. So, I'm in. With this trade, I am trading for Edwin Diaz. I think improving our bullpen is a very important thing to do. Trading Michael Baez, Luis Torres, and Rowan Wick. No one really has all that much value there from our team. And we're getting a really solid potential player. Uh, in Edwin Diaz. So we're going to go ahead and make that move happen. I'm still trying to improve my outfield, I think. And Will Myers, I think he has to go. I know it's going to upset some Padres fans. I think it works out better in the long run if we do that. Might get rid of Franchi Cordero as well. But we have Manuel Margo. We have Luis Robert. I want to get rid of Jose Perilla. So if I can improve my corner outfield spot, and I think Luis Robert's a guy that could eventually play maybe a left field for me. Um... Manuel Margo has no arm. That's upsetting. But yeah, like, Will Myers is not an outfielder. Like he can't... I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm getting somebody better. With this trade, I am trading for Zach Granite, who I don't particularly want. Jorge Polanco, who I'm super excited to get. Probably am going to try and start him at second base. And Aaron Slieger's uh, starting pitcher, B potential. Only 54 overall, but he'll develop. I think we're getting great value with this deal. Trading Will Myers, Tyson Ross, old starting pitcher I don't need. No potential there. And then Matt Strom... I don't need him because of all of the abundance of starting pitchers that we have. So I'm definitely going to make that trade happen. Uh, and then I don't want Granite. I don't. He's I know he's, what, 5'8"? 6'1". That's close enough, right? What did he grow? Just looked it up. Says he's 5'10". I don't know. I don't want him, though. So he's getting moved. With this trade, I am trading Zach Granite and Corey Spangenberg. Uh, you know, solid second baseman, but I'm getting a really, really solid player, Nick Senzel. He is a top eight prospect, I want to say. I was looking at the rankings for this uh, a couple of days ago. I think he's a top eight prospect. 22 years old, eight potential, already 70 overall. He's got some just pure power. He eventually should be sick. I'm making the trade, and uh, we have the new eventual uh, successor to the throne <laughs> at third base. Yeah, King Chase Headley. He's a beast. So Jorge Polanco's, you know, it doesn't really matter that much, but Jorge Polanco's overall did go up to 78 when we moved him to second base from shortstop. And uh, we're definitely going to add him to the 40 man and move him to the MLB. He's our starting second baseman now. I think he's a really good player that we've added. Um, do all that on auto. So basically, we've lost some solid players, but we've made up for that with the addition of uh some very talented players got rid of some starting pitching we didn't you know we don't need all those guys but we brought in edwin diaz catcher i am looking to move on from aj ellis at some point i should probably should trade him before i you know start simulating or anything like that jorge polanco has been added i which i think is tremendous nick senzel is a huge one open your eyes please when i'm showing you open your eyes please open there we go uh I haven't really done too much at shortstop. I don't know how I feel about Freddie Galvis. Don't know how I feel about Jose Perilla. The C potential at, at 28, that bothers me. I don't I don't really like either of these guys for the long term. I don't know what I'm going to do, though. Brought in Luis Robert. Hopefully he gets sick. Uh, and then I might... I'm going to sign a, a right fielder. I, I need to. Joey Bats. All right, I'm in. You're going to not be for two years because I don't want to have you for more than that. Jose Bautista is our new starting right fielder somehow. And he goes up to a 72 overall. He's like, somebody sign me. Morale shoots up. But all right. We're in business. I'm going to not really worry too much about training. We'll see what it is, Auto. I'll change some things maybe. 
And uh, I'll see you guys for draft day, maybe? So continuing the trend of these rebuilds, Marcelo Zuna is headed to the Orioles for Jonathan Scope straight up. And I say continuing the trend. The Orioles make moves in these all the time. As we are, you know, struggling to get close to 500. It's not going well. All right, so we are 23 and 40 right now. Not exactly doing all that well, but we knew this team wouldn't do all that well. We're starting out with a lot of teams that aren't great, admittedly. These are how things are going. Uh, Manuel, uh, Manuel Margo tore his labrum, by the way. He hasn't exactly been progressing with a torn labrum, believe it or not. Jose Perilla is down. Denilson Lamed is, I think, up quite a bit. Where are we in terms of overall? I thought about trading Eric Hosmer, but I mean, that's I'm just that's not going to happen. Um, AJ Ellis is going down. Why did I not trade him? I said I was going to, and I didn't. What an idiot thing to do, to, or not to do. I gotta, I'm going to trade him. Oh, Jorge Polanco is up to an 84. Did not realize that. He's balling out. Plus one's pretty much across the board. Gets him up to an 84. That was a pretty solid trade to make. What else do I want to do, though? Like, where can I... I'm trying to get someone uh, with AJ Ellis to package him off to make this, like, a decent trade. Freddy, Freddy Galvis is down as well. Uh, says he's staying there. I guess maybe that's confidence or morale or whatever. Let's see here. Is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you at the ML... Why? Who called him up? Why? Who thought that was a good idea? I gotta make some changes. Trade I'm gonna make is for Jose Alvarado. AJ Ellis and Travis Jankowski are going. We're getting a 22-year-old B potential 76 overall reliever. I'm making it happen. And I gotta send Luis Robert back down because I don't want him playing at the MLB level. That is not the best for his development. Like, how? who called him up? Who made that decision? So I moved Buddy Reed to the MLB. He's terrible. But if someone has to go, he's going to. Move Luis Robert down to double A. I want him to actually develop. The CPU is like, nah, he's playing now. I'm like, why? Anyway, we're going to simulate to the draft. It's draft day. Like Kevin Costner or whatever. We have these six. Mm, that's not what we practice this. We practice what numbers are. It's not what a six looks like. <laughs> pick seventh overall. With my first pick, I'm taking Sean Jimenez. A first baseman that can also potentially play shortstop. It's an odd combo. You know, continuing the trend of every single prospect. He is below six foot, of course, considerably as well. Has a lot of great potential for hitting. He's a blue chip player. We're going to go ahead and take him. Don't know if he's going to play first base for us, but he is a new San Diego Padre. With this pick, I'm taking Trevor Shelton. We don't know all that much about him in terms of accuracy, but he's an 80 overall with 80 potential. Maybe. I'm willing to take the shot at him. Could be a really great starting pitcher. Definitely could have some value. We're going to go ahead and draft him. And then come back with another starting pitcher in Paul Haynes. Looks to have a tremendous amount of value as well. Um, I'm going to be honest. In these rebuilds, I'm really never going to do all that much scouting. Just takes too long. So I know that that's a fucking bullshit thing to say. But it does. So, I mean, I'm not going to apologize. Center field, Ben Fagan. Could have some, he could have some amazing power eventually. Could have a cannon as well. We're going to go ahead and take him. 20 years old. Could be the move. Hopefully this is six draft class. Really looking to still improve that already stacked farm system. It's all about potential. We're going to go Alan Kyle. Third baseman. And we're going to have one pick remaining, I believe. Yet we picked seventh overall again. It's going to be 80 potential. No one really has it. I don't, I don't trust any of these at all. I really don't. We don't have any accuracy at this point. So at this point, we're just kind of like hoping for the best. I'll take Manuel Alfonso for that reason. High potential, high overall, even though we have no accuracy, so you know, maybe he's gonna be good. Let's check him out. Sign draft picks. Ooh, interesting. Sean Jimenez, 91 potential. Pretty good overall. He's a 65. Um, and he's a blue chip player, so he's gonna be pretty decent. Not too bad. Trevor Shelton, 70 overall. C potential. 70 overall is a great start for the 21-year-old. 79 potential for Paul Haynes. He is a 71 overall. Not too bad. These are some pretty high overalls. 80 overall for Ben Fagan, who is a 53. He's very interesting. On the base path, he seems to be unstoppable. Hitting, not so much. 81 potential for uh, 
Alan Kyle, 50 overall for him, can't hit for shit. And then Mel, uh, Manuel Alfonso, 78 potential. He already looks good though, 63 overall, not bad. Is everyone here below six foot, five ten, six five? Paul Haynes is huge, six foot for Trevor Shelton. These guys are all starting pitchers though. Everyone I draft is always super short. It's interesting. Oh, I just realized Robert probably got called up because uh, because Manuel Margot tore his labrum. I did not put two and two together on that. We had a four game winning streak. Wow. We're going to check out the stats at the All-Star break, a.k.a. the midseason mark. And we'll see how the team is doing. We'll check out statistics. Check out averages, homers, and whatnot. Jose Perilla is leading our team at homers with 14. That's a problem, I'm going to say. It is. It's, just, it's a problem. Uh, Average-wise, Manuel Margo is hitting 400. He was 4 for 8. Prior to going down with injury. And no one's really that close to 300. Chase Headley's hitting 279. Hosmer's only hitting 271. Jorge Polanco's at 268. We need these averages to go way up. This is no good. As far as strikeouts go, Denilson Lamet, he's 5 and 7, but I don't really care about record. 110 strikeouts, 493 ERA. Needs to come down. Brad Hand is pitched all right. Only one loss, one win, 21 saves. Decent. Carter Capps has been pitching well. So it's the trade deadline. If I want to make a move, it's going to be now, probably. I want to trade Jose Perilla and Freddy Galvis. I really do. Freddy Galvis especially. Because, I mean, I don't need him. If you look at the shortstops coming up behind him, we're, we're stacked. Now, that, they're not ready for right now. But Freddy Galvis has some potential value to get traded. And I don't want him. I don't even want Chase Headley. I want to. I want to move on. I think I'm actually going to make this trade once again, improving the bullpen. Freddie Galvis, Colin Ray, and Clayton Richard get me Kelvin Herrera. I'm making the trade. Um, shortstop's going to be weird for right now because Freddie Galvis did add a, a decent amount of value, but I think we're way better off with a reliever. And Kelvin Herrera is a really solid one. He's up to an 85 overall, just randomly. I guess he's really excited to be on the team now because we traded for him at, like, what, an 82? 28 years old, beat potential. Uh, Brad Hand has gone way down. Edwin Diaz has not really improved too much. Kelvin Herrera is a great addition to our team. And that is the trade deadline. We're going to simulate to pretty much the end of the season. Starling Marte is headed to the Mets. David Peterson and Dominic Smith, two prospects headed to the Pirates. So here we go, 56 and 106. The game has to tell me, unfortunately, this was good. Yeah, no shit, we didn't make the postseason. Uh, you know, it's not where we wanted to be, obviously. But, I mean, we were never gonna... We were never gonna do it. The Red Sox are about to win the World Series. And, uh... Ooh, Dodgers making a comeback. Of course not, nah. Red Sox are World Series champions. As we're going to go to the offseason. And uh, my least favorite part of any offseason, which is Joey Batts retires as well. Uh, my least favorite part of any offseason, which is signing prospects, Ichiro Hall of Fame. And I hate to sign pitchers or and coaches, hit, pitching and hitting coaches. I don't know why I said pitchers. And like that's not even a good manager. But I can't really just like fire him because I have to pay a lot of money. So we're fucked. How many Hoffmans do we need? Do we have enough Hoffmans? Do I need to go see what Trevor's up to? We got a new hitting coach in Ken Pechtel and a new pitching coach. That was actually pretty seamless because I just offered a ton of money. So they're making a lot. <laughs> he's making a lot of money. But he's very good. Plus two to contact, plus two to play division, plus three to power. That's amazing. All right, so you got to tender some contracts here. And there are a lot of players I need to bring back. Like a lot of players. So I'm going to deal with this. And uh, then see if we can do anything in free agency of note. Also, I have to uh, offer salary arbitration to Edwin Diaz, to a lot of these players as well. Uh, I want to bring back everyone above Matt Caesar. And Alan Craig, maybe? Uh, absolutely not. No potential on any of these guys. Yeah, exactly what I said. Mets have signed Paul Goldschmidt. We've actually signed Jerry Blevins, three years, 17 mil. He's an 87 overall. He's 35, so 
We're going to have him for his career, most likely. Cardinals get Cody Allen. Indians get Sean Doolittle. Andrew Miller to the Giants. Nats get Chris Sale. Mike Moustakas to the Dodgers. Royals, now with some extra money, don't have to sign Moose, get Bryce Harper. Indians get Brian Dozier. Mariners get Machado. And that is free agency. I offered some contracts. So I don't know what they're up to, but sign, please. They may have signed. It just didn't pop up because they don't matter. I signed Freddie Galvis back. So we got some value out of him, maybe. And now he's back. I signed AJ Pollock. I signed Jerry Blevins, who's the new highest overall on our team. I was a pro that was all I went after. That was a productive free agency. I'm going to simulate to free agency two. Got to make sure Edwin Diaz stays. All right, I've offered Edwin Diaz arbitration. Hopefully he comes back. Uh, we're just going to make sure. Yep, he is back for four years, four mil. Is that really what I'm paying him? Because that's ridiculous. Because he's worth way more than that. All right, I'm down. Um, free agency. We could get Charlie Blackman, which really wouldn't be the worst thing with my outfield right now. And I could get rid of Jose Perilla, maybe. Ooh, let's see. Charlie Blackman is 32. Overall is down. Hitting's down. This interests me. So he's going to get like, what, 12 a year maybe if we sign him? I don't want to sign him to a five-year deal there's no way but 38 over three i could certainly do that for charlie blackman we're gonna simulate and he's still out there my offer has disappeared can i not afford it is that what's going on here i want to offer 38 over three with a player option we're back in the lead and we're simulating charlie blackman to the red Sox. where did they come from I don't know. All right, rule five draft now. Probably not going to take anybody. We pick second overall in this rule five draft. Hunter Dozier's there. We can get him back. We can get Jack Flaherty, uh, who I've taken before in this. I feel like he's a pretty good player, and I've traded him a lot for value. I'm going to take him again. If I can get Hunter Dozier in the second, I'll also do that. Now you get taken. So I am I'm definitely done because there's going to be nobody here. Braden Shipley, like... He really going to have value? Jorge Lopez would certainly have more. I feel like, maybe. Ah, mm. uh, no. I'm just not going to deal with it. All right. This is the new and updated roster. Brad Hand is going down in overall. I don't like that. He's 29. His potential is not great. I wish he was better. I'm going to be honest. Jorge Polanco is doing well. Denilson Lamette is up to an 81. He's going to be my ace. Robbie Erlin can probably get traded. And look at all these just star pitchers in the making down here. Cal Quantrill, Mackenzie Gore, Anderson Espinoza, Adrian Morajon, Joey Lucchese even. Like these are, these are good players. Jerry Blevins in the pen. Carter Caps, Brad Hand, Edwin Diaz. We lost Kelvin Herrera. Oh, I don't know how that happened. That's, that's my bad. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Edwin Diaz. Do I make him just my reliever? I think he's going to be a reliever. We'll do that. I wonder if his overall goes up. I'll be interested to see. That stays exactly the same. Austin Hedges is my starting catcher. High potential. High hopes for him. Got Eric Hosmer at first base. Sean Jimenez, who we drafted, is looking pretty spicy. Let me tell you. Josh Naylor could potentially be traded now. Uh, we got Jorge Polanco, Carlos Asuaje. Got to figure out what we're doing with him. Alan Cordoba. All these guys could be trade bait. Nick Senzel is my new starting third baseman. Didn't bring back Chase Headley. Uh, so we'll see how he does in his rookie season. Freddy Galvis still start, uh, starting at shortstop. We got Luis Urias and Fernando Tatis. They're both playing at the same level. I don't I don't like that. We're going to move uh, Urias to second base maybe? third base are they are they getting equal playing time like how, how how is the cpu doing this i'm gonna move i'm gonna move tatis down to double a we're, we're gonna play him there left field we got jose perilla i'm looking to potentially move manuel margo healthy again we got franchi cordero getting better 
Uh, and then Luis Robert hopefully improving as well. He looks a little bit better than last time we saw him. He's up to a 63 from, what, a 61 maybe? And then A.J. Pollock is in right field starting. It's a better team. This is, again, not a team that's going to do all that well, though. We're really playing the long with uh, a lot of these teams that we're rebuilding here early. As, uh, you know, hopefully we can make some trades this year, maybe at the deadline. Draft some studs again. And I will see you guys for that draft. I should have checked the stats at the end of the season. I got to get got to get better at doing that. All right, draft day is here. We are 31 and 30, actually above 500. We're probably competing for a spot in the playoffs right now as uh, Cal Quantrill is injured. Separated his shoulder. I got to get that back together, I guess, would probably be for the best. My top prospects, this is everyone. This is the top prospect list. So Mackenzie Gore is up there. I like that. Fernando Tatis, Adrian Morajon. Where is uh, my other shortstop? Luis Uri Urias. Sean Jimenez is in there. We got a lot of prospects in here in the top 50. Did Urias get called up? Yeah, they called up Luis Urias. Urias. He's down to a 66. Tatis is up to a 68. He's playing real well, I guess. So... You can't. You're gonna go to Double A. I'm not. I'm not playing you there. I'm not. You're not gonna be with my MLB team. I move up. I move up. Javier Guerra. I can't do that. So I, I don't know how this is gonna go. It's draft day. Let's draft somebody sick. Here we go. We pick second overall. There goes Justin Vickers, and let's see who we can get. I'm gonna take a closer. Rafael Vesperas out of Venezuela. 65 overall, but 80 potential blue chip player. Welcome him to the team. Next up, I'm going Robinson Sneed. Accuracy is decent on him. He looks like he could be sick. 70 overall, 80 potential pitcher out of New York. Welcome to the team. I think I'm going to come back with another starting pitcher. Reed Lockwood looks like he could be really good as well. So we're going to take him. Andrew Novoa out of Nicaragua. 23 years old. Looks like he could be amazing. I'm always going to go after the highest potential players, even if the accuracy is not all the way there. I think it's just worth it. And in an experience, I mean, it's worked out for me. And I might follow up that up with a Raymond Kim, another shortstop. Irving Tonus looks all right. The accuracy is just not that high for players down there with low potential. So I'm going to take the highest potential I know, which is Raymond Kim out of Maryland, 23 years old, 80 potential potentially. We don't know exactly. No catcher here, Alex Garcia. Could be good. That's What can I say, really? I mean, any, anyone could be good. I don't really know. And we'll finish it out with uh, Rodney Graham. Third baseman. I like his potential. Welcome to the San Diego Padres. All right, here we go. Big money. Uh, interesting. So, Rafael Vesperis, the closer, looks sick. A potential, which is 93. 72 overall. I like him. Robinson Sneed is interesting. 66 overall, 78 potential, so that's not great. But Reed Lockwood looks really, really good. Per nines aren't quite there, but everything else seems to be 18 years old, 88 potential, only 58 overall. He looks to be really, really good, though. Uh, Navoa, only 56 overall, 76 potential, 72 potential for Kim, 58 overall, 54 for Alex Garcia. Rodney Graham is not even good. These guys down here were not solid. Up near the top, top four, were, uh, top three were pretty good. I'm not going to sign Alex Garcia, I don't think. But I'll bring on everybody else. Alex Garcia is some, is some hot garbage. He has nothing good about him, really. 43 and 54 at the All-Star break. I don't think we're going to be in position to make the playoffs. It's just not going to happen. Uh, when I say I don't think, I do. We're 21 and a half games back. Not doing great. Luis Robert tore his shoulder. I don't know why. I should turn injuries off. I don't know why I keep those on. But uh, here's how things are going. As far as you know, development goes, Denilson Lamette is balling out. He's playing really, really well. Continues to uh, to go up and overall. Jorge Polanco as well. He's on the same boat. In the same boat. Manuel Margo is getting better. AJ Pollock is on fire. Might look to trade him at the deadline. I don't know. Austin Hedge is getting better. We got a lot of guys uh, really playing well. So what that screams to me is trade bait. It really does. 
Got a lot of players we could potentially trade. And uh, I'm in. I like to trade players. Bullpen, it's all right. Brad Hand is, you know, disappointing, I would say. Austin Hedges is ball, no. Uh, we got Hosmer. I don't know how I feel about him. He hasn't really done much since we've had him. Kind of, you know, it'll always be that 84, 85. Jorge Polanco is playing really well. Carlos Asuaje, what have you been doing? Hitting 241. How are you playing up? You have been terrible. All right. Not going to complain. Third baseman, Nick Senzel. This is a player I really want to see how he's doing. Not edit. How are you playing? 264, seven home runs out of his 52 hits. What is he slugging? Slugging 401. OPS is pretty high. Not a terrible rookie year, I guess. Freddie Galvis, I can move on from maybe. Shortstops are all playing really well. Urias is back in AAA and playing well. Tatis, same deal. Where are you just hitting? What are you hitting in AAA? I can't tell from here. Left field, Jose Perilla, still looking to maybe move him. Manuel Margo, I like it. Luis Robert on the DL is no good. Franchi Cordero is about a 70 overall. I could trade him for some value. We might make some trades. All right, we're making a gigantic trade for Michael Fulmer. 26 years old, a potential 88 overall. We're trading Ben Fagan, Paul Haynes, and Astori Ruiz. This is a no-brainer for me. Very, very easy. Uh, trading from the trade block there. Michael Fulmer, new best player on our team. And our rotation is improving that much more. That was a gigantic trade. I like the trade block. I'm going to continue using this. I'm also getting Michael Conforto, Anderson Espinosa, Alan Cordoba. I don't really want to trade Alan Cordoba. If I can actually edit that to get him not involved, I really would do that. Uh, which I might be able to just barely. Because I want to keep Alan Cordoba. I don't really need him because we have Carlos Sesuaje. Uh, but I kind of want to hold on to him. Hudson Potts would make that go through. I can, I can get this to go. Alan Kyle doesn't push it over. Tatis is injured. That sucks. Oh, Javier Guerra. We don't need him. He's, we don't need him at all. He's gone. See you later. And welcome Michael Conforto to the San Diego Padres. 79 overall. I just traded for him at like an 83. What the fuck happened? Also, the Angels have top prospect Joe Adele on the trade block, and I want him. Problem is, I would have to give up a lot of value, potentially. So it might have to be one of my top pitching prospects uh, as they, they want Mackenzie Gore. Now, I'm not willing to trade Mackenzie Gore. I would add in Jack Flaherty and work from there from the Rule 5 draft as they need a catcher. What can I give you a catcher? Luis Campusano. That would make it go through. Let's add AJ Kennedy and let's see if I can push this over. All right, Hudson Potts is going to make it go through. And I really like this trade to get Joe Adele. 19 years old, already a 70 overall. Adds to our outfield, and we are making it happen. We've been very busy at the trade deadline. I think for good reason, though. I think that was a major, major trade we just made for Joe Adele. I think he's going to be a really big piece to our team eventually. And if we go into our outfield now, Jose Perilla can go. I'd way rather have Conforto. Center field's getting crowded. I'll tell you that much. Might send Joe Adele back to the minors and play him in right. He might be a better fit in right field, so here's what I'm going to do. Go ahead and make him a right fielder primarily. Uh, and then, yeah, outfield can be fine for a secondary. So he's going to go in right field where he is still a 70 probably. 67. Ugh. I don't like that. We're going to move him to AAA. Hopefully he gets better down there. And I am going to now look to trade Jose Perilla, I think. All right, this is the trade I'm making to bring in Felipe Rivero slash Felipe Vasquez. Kevin Segrist and AJ Shugo, Jose Perilla, Alan Cordoba, and Josh Naylor are on the move. Felipe Rivero is an instant upgrade over Brad Hand. 91 overall. Felipe Vasquez is what he goes by now. So our bullpen is really, really good. So needless to say, I don't need all these guys. Could trade Jerry Blevins. Could trade Brad Hand. I think what I'm going to want to do, though, is maybe trade Jerry Blevins. He's 35. Um, I know he signed him, and I said he was going to be here for a while. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that anymore. I don't. 
because he has, you know, the worst potential growth of everyone. And then Brad Hand can move just, you know, to the regular bullpen area. And maybe we can even use Brad Hand. Brad Hand is really good in real life. We look at prospects. I don't think we're going to get anyone too good. Nah, we're pretty much going to want MLB ready players at this point. Tony Zich and Tim Beckham. No. Matances is an interesting option. Um, Addison Reed isn't bad. I think we're just going to hold on to the bullpen and just and make that thing stacked. Because if you look in uh, our bullpen here, I mean, we have some we have some pitchers. It, it's a solid bullpen. So we're going we're gonna to hold on to those guys and I think simulate to uh, waiver trades. Let's see what our team is ranking. So everywhere at third base, we're looking pretty good. And at third base, we have a top prospect, potentially in Nick Senzel, who can only continue to get better, hopefully. So I like him there. We're going to go ahead and simulate to about the end of the season. So we finished 69 wins. Nice. 93 losses. Didn't make the postseason. I meant to stop simulating so I could see the stats from our players. Unfortunately, things didn't work out to plan or simulate to the offseason. As the Red Sox have once again won the World Series beating the Cubs. And we're going to go ahead and clear that. And uh, my first and third base coach contracts are up, which I'm fine with. We'll get better options. Adrian Beltre and Albert Pujols go to the Hall of Fame. And, uh, I mean, I'll bring back Kevin Segrist. Craig Stammon, I could do without. Review our staff here. I feel like Andy Green is awful. I don't want you. But I don't also, I also don't want to pay your contract. So we're going to look for a better first base coach. So we got a new third base coach. The first base coach declined. I keep having to hear about fucking Brett Kennedy. I don't care about you. And uh, I think the CPU has just signed a coach at first. No, they haven't. All right, what can we do here? Who do I want? Arm accuracy, I kind of care about that. Arm strength, I care more about. Johnny Law, I'm in. We got to offer some salary arbitrations here. Or actually, offers would just be better. Go we'll player option on Michael Fulmer. And then Michael Conforto will do the same thing. So we're going to free agency here. And there are some decent players. Nolan Arenado jumps out especially. He's not really getting all that much. He's playing way down. Why? Why is he playing way down? Xander Bogarts is playing up through the roof. I don't really need a shortstop. Third base, I mean, we have Senzel, who I like there. But, I mean, Arenado is a, is a good player. Maybe we'll say that for another time. Garrett Cole would be a good addition to our team. I'll make an offer on Garrett Cole. Got our first base coach in Johnny Law. Liam Hendricks to the Rangers. Red Sox sign. Closer, Zach Britton. Dodgers get Jonathan Lucroy. Twins get Sonny Gray. Again, Xander Bogarts to the Orioles. Orioles make moves. Nats sign Garrett Cole. That's unfortunate. And uh, we're fine for the Rule 5 draft. Why do I not have... I offered Michael Conforto. We'll raise, we'll raise the offer a bit to 27. Anthony Rendon's still sitting there. He's 29. And not bad. I'm I'm gonna sign Anthony Rendon. I can't afford him. I'm not gonna sign Anthony Rendon. Rendon goes to the Tigers. Starling Marte up to Seattle. Rule five draft. We pick fifth overall. There's gonna be no one here that I want really. Uh, correct. Nobody that I want. All right. Spring training is here. We'll take a look at the roster. Michael Fulmer is up to a 93. Of course, Felipe Vasquez. We'll look at the starting pitchers, though. Look at a trade, Robbie Erlin. This is the third year of this, and uh, a lot of these starting pitchers have not matured all that much. Might look to get them, actually, to the MLB now and see how they play, and I'll be looking to move on from a lot of these starting pitchers. Michael Fulmer and Denilson Lamette, I mean, they're fine, obviously. Robbie Erlin can get traded. Luis Perdomo can get traded. I love Cal Quantrill here. He's fine. Uh, and then as far as relief pitchers go, I mean, we have one of the best and deepest pens in the MLB, I would guess, especially with Felipe Rivero, Brad Hand, and the addition of Rafael Vesperas, our drafted closer. He looks like an animal. He's in double A, should be dominating there. Catchers, Austin Hedges is looking nice, could be on the move though. I'm looking to get way better. Eric Hosmer, 83. Why are you not improving at all? Ever. Poor. Jorge Polanco's getting better. Carlos Asuaje as well. 
Nick Senzel's up to a 74 overall, looking for a breakout year from him. Freddie Galvis, I'm going to trade probably and start either uh, Luis Arias or Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Conforto in left field's up to an 86. I love that. Manuel Margot at an 84. Luis Robert is very close to... Uh, I mean, he's with our, us right now in the starting uh, you know, the 40-man roster. I don't want him to be there, though. I might trade Franchi Cordero. And we get AJ Pollock and right. Of course, Joe Waddell could see some time as well. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and make some trades. Get this team better. Whether that means acquiring better starting pitching. Because, I mean, we have some really good players in here, obviously. Uh, but, I mean, like, you know, further down the line. They take a little while to develop. So I am trading a lot of value here, but I'm bringing in Chris Archer, I think. I might come back to this, but it, it might be Carlos Asuaje, Robbie Erlin, and Jerry Blevins in order to bring in uh, the starting pitcher, Chris Archer. I don't know if I want to do that just yet. I'm going to look around for some more options. All right, so the trade I'm doing instead of Chris Archer is actually going to be for Noah Syndergaard, Thor, and we're giving up a lot of value here. We're giving up Adrian Morejon, top 50 prospect, 21 years old, looks to be really, really solid. I'm giving up Brad Hand in the pen. I figure I can, you know, I can lose him with the rest of the value here in the pen. Giving up Kevin Segrist as well. We got Rafael Vesperas coming up. We have other really, really good players in the bullpen. And we're improving the starting pitching quite a bit here, bringing in Noah Syndergaard. As our, our rotation looks like it could be getting pretty good. I'm also going to trade for Jose Ramirez. 27 years old, 88 overall. Looks to be pretty decent. Trading Jerry Blevins. Moving on from him, it's a pretty big contract. This gives us a little bit more breathing room, even though we're bringing on Jose Ramirez. Trading also Robbie Erlin and Luis Perdomo, two of our best starting pitchers. But that, we got Cal Quantrill. We got Joey Lucchese. could bring up Mackenzie Gore. We have a number of options. I'm bringing in Jose Ramirez. And uh, I think I want to focus a little bit more on hitting now that we have a really good group of pitchers overall. So he is going to be maybe my starting third baseman. Maybe. I like Senzel, man. I do. I want to trade Freddie Galvis. If I'm being honest, I want to trade Eric Hosmer, and I think I might do that. If I could do Carlos Asuaje, Freddie Galvis, and Eric Hosmer for a really good player, I'm going to do that. So when I was going through here, I thought for sure that I was going to accept this trade from the Jays to bring in Marcus Stroman, Justin Smoke, and Carlos Ramirez. I thought... That's a great deal for Eric Hosmer, Carlos Asuaje, and Freddy Galvis. I'm like, that's awesome. Get a six starting pitcher, good first baseman to replace uh, Eric Hosmer, not even that much older. But then I got this offer from the Braves. Freddie Freeman, Matt Whistler, and Yoan Camargo. Now, Matt Whistler is trade bait at best. Yoan Camargo, trade bait at best. But Freddie Freeman is a top first baseman in the league. A big upgrade over Eric Hosmer. Carlos Esquai has a backup. Freddie Galvis can be replaced by one of my uh, young shortstops. I think I'm going to do this trade. I think at this point, I value Freddie Freeman over Marcus Stroman, and I think that's what it comes down to. Um, so we're in a really, really good spot now. A bunch of really talented players on this team. Awesome replacement for Haas. And now, I do want to trade some stuff that we just got. So, starting pitcher, I do want to trade Whistler. If I can get some great value, I'm in. I maybe want to trade Lucchese, because our top, our rotation, let's think about it. Fulmer, Syndergaard, Lamette, Quantrill, and then I can bring in Mackenzie Gore. So, I don't need Lucchese, I don't need Matt Whistler, and I don't need somebody else. Now, does that mean I get rid of a relief pitcher? We have a lot of value here. Does it mean I get rid of a closer? I could trade Visparis, who has no value. Um, we could move on from one of these players. Carter Caps potentially, if I get another really sick MLB player. I'm going to look around. I'm going to see what's out there. I'm going to bring somebody in, most likely. I'm also making a really interesting trade. Um, I'm trading a top prospect in Luis Arias at shortstop. I'm going to start Fernando Tatis. I'm trading AJ Pollock. I'm trading Michael Conforto. I'm getting Teoscar Hernandez, Roberto Osuna, and Felix Hernandez. Uh, very interesting trade. I think one of the more interesting ones of this entire thing. Uh, as Joe Adele moves to starting right field, Teoscar Hernandez, I guess, would move to left. 
Uh, but the new way I want to go about getting better players in the team is looking at a position that I want to upgrade and then, you know, manually going after that position by trading immense amount of value in order to get them. I think our rotation now has been solidified. I'm going to trade Whistler. I'm going to trade Lucchese. And I'm going to try to trade some value and maybe get a better catcher than Austin Hedges. So I'm going to do a straight up trade. It's going to be Austin Hedges straight up from the Twins. Uh, Mabris Valoria. I don't know why they would do this. I think this is just way better for us. Austin Hedges is a little bit better offensively. And then Valoria is a little bit better defensively. He's way younger. Straight up trade. I'd rather have him. Just would. All right, I didn't want to do this really. I mean, like I do because I'm doing it. Uh, but I'm trading Matt Whistler. I'm trading Teoscar Hernandez, who is a very, very good player. Uh, and I'm trading, actually, Edwin Diaz. He's the player I didn't really want to part with, but it's the only way the trade works. Uh, we do have a really good bullpen otherwise, so I'm a little bit okay with making this happen, especially with our closers well now with the addition of Roberto Osuna. Um, would I prefer Edwin Diaz to Osuna? I mean, it's very close. I don't know why Osuna's playing down. And Edwin Diaz is pretty nice. I'm going to say I prefer Osuna for right now. We're going to trade Edwin Diaz. And we're going to pick up from the Brewers. Orlando Arcia. He's going to start at shortstop. This is a really good player to get. Super excited to get Orlando Arcia. And, of course, in right field, Domingo Santana. Killer bat to add. Great corner outfielder. Like what he brings to the table. Um, welcome to the team, Orlando Arcia and Domingo Santana. The problem with uh, Domingo Santana is he's not great defensively, and we did lose an awesome, awesome player. Um, and our bullpen has gotten, I would get, I would say, significantly worse over the course of a lot of these moves. We're going to go into free agency here. Can't really get anyone there. I'm going to see if I can bring back uh, Edwin Diaz, because he is really good. I do like him a lot. I'd like to keep him on the team, if possible, but or get him back, maybe, I should say. I, just, I don't really have the operating money to do a lot of things, but the team's coming along very, very nicely. It's just I have a lot of players, or a few players, getting paid a ton. Fulmer and uh, Freddie Freeman both make 15.8 per year, which is, I want to say, is borderline too much to put, you know, pay anybody. But we have a, we have a good team. Got to figure out what's going on in this outfield. Uh, Domingo Santana's fine. Do I start Joe Adele? Is that the move? I think it is. He's already with the team. No sense bringing him down to the minors. He's going to go ahead and play left field now. And hopefully go up and overall instead of the last time he went down. He does. He goes up to a 75. All right. We're in business. This is a team. This is a team that can play. Fernando Tatis has no, you know, worry about moving up to the majors just yet. We don't need him there. Senzel has got to keep developing, but he's behind Jose Ramirez now, who I was going to move to shortstop. We got Orlando Arcia. It's regular season time. This is how uh, our team looks, by the way. Left field's the only issue, but we have Joe Adele there, who's fine. We're going to go ahead and simulate to the regular season. And that is a major trade that happened, of course. You guys look familiar? It should. There's another one. Ha, <laughs> there's another one. There's another one. I feel like DJ Khaled. All right, we're basically just going to go to draft day. All right, it is draft day. We are 27 and 33. We started off really, really poorly and then actually started winning some games. Um, all right, I don't really, I, I don't want to do scouting. Um, the draft doesn't really matter too much. We could get Alberto Ramirez to eventually replace Edwin Diaz. All, all the closers are always starting out really nice in overall, uh, and the rest is just never there. But I mean, there's some decent players here. They're never really position players. Which is what I like to look for, because they're just they're more exciting. If I'm gonna be honest, Irving Davidson looks decent, but um, this is where we are roster-wise. Orlando Arcia is improving a lot. I like that. Noah Syndergaard is not. He's not up to an 85 overall. I traded for like an 87. What do you mean? Domingo Santana's up, or I guess he's not, but he is. Freddie Freeman's on the DL. He's down to an 84. The fuck. He tore his labrum. Why do I have injuries still on? Felix Hernandez is on fire. He's a trade deadline trade. I'm telling you right now, he's getting moved. 
Joe Adele is up to a 76. Nick Senzel is up to a 76. I like this. All right, draft time. Here we go. Kevin Costner draft day. We picked fifth overall. Do we have a shot at that closer? Where is closer? No, we don't. Irving Davidson is a pick here. Power hitting first baseman. 20 years old. He looks pretty sick. We're going to take him. I'm just going to do the rest of the draft uh, off camera. I'm going to... I might even just simulate it after this pick. Because I don't have a lot of accuracy on these uh, players. I haven't done a lot of scouting. As you guys can see. Wow, that's that's a brutal overall. So I'm just probably just going to sort by overall. Nope, don't want to draft him. Sort by overall and then look at the highest potential and see what the highest accuracy is with that potential. And it looks like it's going to be starting pitcher Miguel Ostalaza. Ostalaza. There we go. I'm auto-drafting. See you later. Sign draft picks. Ooh, Evan Hennessy. Was drafted. 47 overall, but he has high potential. CPU drafted some shit players. Miguel Ostalaza looks like uh, Jerome Benedict from the Braves franchise, if you see him. He's nowhere near as good. And Gil Garcia is not bad. 74 overall already. But then, of course, we look at Irvin. Irving Davidson is a monster. 95 potential. He's already a 70 overall. He is a beast. We are 45 and 51 now at the uh, at the All-Star break. We are going to be in pursuit of a playoff spot. 11 and a half games back, and we've been winning some games as well. Who's on the DL? Freddie Freeman again. Man, I got to turn off injuries next time. But our team's looking pretty nice. All right. We're looking, we're looking pretty good. As far as, you know, notable improvements to the team. All right, and overall, since we last checked up on us, there just hasn't been any, really. Felix Hernandez continues to go up. He is 33. I mean, we don't need to trade him even. But I do want to get Mackenzie Gore in there. He's just, he's improving a lot at AAA. Definitely want to bring him up. So Felix Hernandez could be on the move. And we could get some value on him uh, for him. We're going to be dumping a lot of... Uh, uh, salary if we do that as well 5.1 mil all right with this trade this one is a blockbuster trade as big as it gets in my opinion from the yankees we're getting el gary gary sanchez jonathan holder and tommy canely improving the bullpen and getting a star catcher we're trading lewis or excuse me luis robert who has insane value we're trading mabris valoria as well our starting catcher but we have el gary now so he doesn't really matter um, and we're trading, of course, King Felix, but this is a gigantic trade, uh, getting a lot of value there. And El Gary is a tremendous, tremendous upgrade over Mabris Valoria. I hate looking at El Gary in a Padres jersey, but for the sake of this rebuild, I'll take it. So as far as starting pitchers go, Mackenzie Gore, you're getting added to the 40 man and you are headed to the MLB finally. That is our five-man rotation. It looks pretty good. This is a very good lineup. I expect big big things. Vesperos could honestly move into the big leagues as well. He's definitely ready. And this is a team that is set to do some damage. They'll get that chemistry going. And this is a team that should play very, very well. With this trade, I'm trading for JD Martinez, Matt Barnes, and uh, on our side, we're giving up a lot. Jose Ramirez, Carter Caps, and Roberto Osuna. So Nick Senzel will likely start at third base in this scenario if I don't choose to bring in um, Fernando Tatis Jr. We're getting rid of Carter Caps in the pen. I'm getting rid of Roberto Osuna. JD Martinez is an absolute monster, though. And I might even use him as further trade bait, or he could start in the outfield um, over likely joe adele bringing a, a, a crazy bat so we're gonna make that trade happen and potentially even move on from jd i don't i don't know yet all right johan camargo and aj shugel straight up is gonna get me jacob barnes from the brewers i'm making that trade pretty much a replacement for uh some relief pitchers that we lost in carter caps being one of them and uh he is our new best relief pitcher our bullpen is pretty good again so I think I'm fine. This, I mean, I'm, I'm dealing with the trade block and um, would really like Ozzy Albies, obviously, but I don't think there's any way I can get him. There's just not. He's on the trade block, but they want a ton. So I, I just can't do it. 
Alex Claudio is headed to the Giants. Julian Fernandez, Nolan Martinez, and Ryan Howard. Not the same Ryan Howard you might know, but he's headed elsewhere. We're winning some games. We might be able to make the playoffs here. Oh, we've lost a lot of games in a row. We lost a lot of games in a row. We went 84 and 78 and have not made the playoffs. Can I see uh, statistics here? I can. Awesome. So we missed out on the playoffs. I assume we were 16 games back. Giants made it. They got a wild card spot down nine. Next year, we're definitely a playoff team. Absolutely. Freddie Freeman being out really, really hurt, obviously. Check out the statistics. Domingo Santana hit 29 home runs. They have a lot of power from, from some of the guys in our roster. Gary Sanchez with 33. Not all these came with us, obviously. Gary Sanchez had a season, let me tell you. Average-wise, no one hit for 300. Oh, Gary, oh, Gary did. He hit 301. We need, we need better, uh, better hitting from a lot of these players. But we're so close. We'll check out uh, ERA as well. See who did what. Syndergaard looked pretty good overall. ERA was low. Cal Quantrill, we need him to be a little bit better. Michael Fulmer was great. Mackenzie Gore was actually pretty good. Struck out 81 and 79 and two-thirds as well. Danielson Lamette has to be better. Not bad, but we didn't make the postseason. Next, next season, we're going to. It's an absolute postseason team if we can hold on to our players. We got a new farm director. He's actually really, really good. Uh, if we go ahead and see him. Brings plus one to plower, plus two to plate vision. I said plower. Don't. Well, you can plow her, but you can. I'm talking about power. Whatever. Um, he looks pretty good. And a lot of salary arbitration from some players that we traded for and others. We have new contracts to hand out. It's going to be a very busy offseason for me. I'll just try to hold on to everyone. In free agency, George Springer is here. I don't think I'll be able to afford George Springer. I don't really know. A lot of these players are pretty good. It's like, what do we need at this point? Could use a starting pitcher, kind of, but not really. Let's see. Starting pitching looks pretty solid overall. Uh, relief pitching looks pretty solid overall. Especially with uh, Rafael Vesperas getting called up this year, more than likely. El Gary, a catcher's great. Freddie Freeman. Is down to an 85. I hate that. I really do. But we're still probably fine. And look at our first baseman. We have some sick first base prospects. Second base, we're fine. Third base, I like Senzel here a lot. Can any of these first basemen play third? No. Shout out to New Jersey for Irving Davidson. Third base is the only point where we could really upgrade. Fernando Tatis could play third, maybe. Um, he looks really, really good. Might call him up this year to play second or something. J.D. Martinez is great. Joe Adele is great. Um, Manuel Margot, great. Domingo Santana, great. So we don't really need to improve uh, through free agency. We can. But we don't. We definitely don't need to. Wade Davis to the Nationals. George Springer to the Mets. Yankees sign Chris Archer. Diamondbacks get James Paxton. Cespedes to the Twins. Rule 5 draft is here. I don't really see us getting anybody. Akil Morris goes. We pick 21st. Dominic Smith is here. I don't need him. Don't really need anybody in here. And it is spring training time. We'll take a look at the roster, and it is a good one. You can see third base is the only real weak point. Um, and again, Senzel could get much better. I'd like to see him at an 80 overall uh, real soon. I think that's definitely going to happen. He's, he's quickly approaching that. Freddie Freeman's back up to a 94, fully healthy, I guess that works. Um, bullpen, pretty solid overall. Starting pitchers continue to get better. Very, very good already. Joey Lucchese has more trade value than ever, up to a 79, so I'm probably going to try and move him. Relief pitching, we talked about. Closing pitcher, fine. Elgari, fine. Freddie Freeman, awesome. Jorge Polanco, awesome. Nick Senzel, we're going to get there. Orlando Arce is looking good. Fernando Tatis. I don't know what... I really want to play with him, dude. But, like, I don't know where we play him exactly. J.D. Martinez and Joe Adele in left is a really interesting combo of just one guy who can't field at all but is great at hitting and one guy who's struggling at the plate 
but is a tremendous fielder and all around, you know, speeds through everything. Manuel Margot has developed so nicely in center field. Domingo Santana as well is great in right. This is a really good team. I just have to figure out what is the next step. And with that, it's what do we do with Lucchese? Lucchese, however he says it. And what do we do about third base and Fernando Tatis? Do I try to play Fernando Tatis at third? What would he look like at third base? That's the question. Pretty damn good at third base. Interesting. I'm actually going to be bringing a familiar face back. I'm trading Joey Lucchese, Franchi Cordero, and Irving Davidson. We drafted Irving Davidson. We just have a lot of depth at first base. We don't need him. I'm getting Glaber Torres, Luis Robert, and Tyro Estrada from the New York Yankees. It's a good trade for us. Gives us a lot of depth. Glaber Torres at second, I think, is awesome. Um, of course, we got... Well, we could trade Nick Senzel, but I, I don't want to. I think Fernando Tatis is going to start at third. And then we acquired Luis Robert back. Joe Adele. What would, what would these guys get me out of curiosity? Nothing too crazy. I like him on the team. We're going to keep him. We did very, very well in that trade. And uh, we're going to sip to the regular season. Hopefully they got that chemistry working, that morale's going. We are making the playoffs 100%. Currently before the draft, we are sitting at 35-25, and 25, five games back out of first place, which I think we're going to contend for. And we're going to go ahead and draft. Uh, I'm going to make this very, very quick, guys. We pick... Probably near the near the tail end of things. 21. Um, there's no one that I'm going to draft that's ever going to see the light of day in this uh, in this franchise. So it's pretty much whoever. I have no blue chip players. It's it's definitely whoever. The draft went really really poorly because I simmed it after taking that relief pitcher. Who is uh, he's okay now. Um, and I you know I simmed it. I gotta expect poor results, and that's exactly what I got. But the team is coming together very, very nicely. We've been winning a lot of games. We've been losing a few games. But this is a playoff team. These are the updated overalls. Uh, guys playing up or playing down. And things are going well. Denilson Lamette is up to a 91. He is playing crazy well, it looks like. Um, Mackenzie Gore skyrocketed he passed Cal Quantrill wow what is what is his potential 93 man how did he skyrocket past Cal Quantrill I'll never know bullpen is looking really really solid overall Felipe Rivera of course is a closer Rafael Vesperis is getting moved up to the MLB like why would he not he's balling out we're definitely gonna play him um, we're gonna make him a relief pitcher 93 potential on him. How do I change? General? Yeah. He's just a relief pitcher now. So I assume his overall is going to stay exactly the same. And it does. Catchers, Elgari, Beasting, Freddie Freeman, Beast. Sean Jimenez on the DL right now. That's the reason why I uh, traded whatever the hell his name was. Got Jorge Polanco. Glaber Torres is up to an 84. He's not even playing. He might be. Fernando Tatis up to an 82. Labor Torres could even start at third, uh, but I'm going to keep Fernando Tatis there. Zenzel, he's even playing up. Orlando Arcia up to an 87. Tyro Estrada, who we got from the Yankees, is in, is in our farm system as well. J.D. Martinez playing well enough. Joe Adele, I was hoping he'd be up more than he is. I thought he was like a 76 overall already. Manuel Margo beasting. Luis Robert back up to uh, over a 70. And Domingo Santana down a little bit to an 83. That's unfortunate. But this is a team that is going in hot and ready like a little caesar's pizza those things are disgusting not an ad all right just about postseason time i would say we're absolutely making the playoffs as we're going to finish out here pretty strong and we have made the playoffs 92 and 70 we've made the wild card but we've made it that's what counts going up very close to the dodgers and giants as well um, we'll go ahead and check out the player statistics see how we got here Let's go ahead and uh, sort by home runs. Gary led our team with home runs, 32. 
Mingo Santana right behind with 28. Also led in RBIs with 94. Stolen bases was Manuel Margot with 18. Joe Adele stole 12. Average-wise, J.D. Martinez was the only guy above 300. Nick Senzel, in limited plate appearances, hit 289. No wonder he's playing up. 275 for Margot. All these guys are mainly around 270, which I think is pretty good for this team. That you know Their bats aren't insane. Slugging percentage was J.D. OPS was insane. 925. Jeez. A ton of doubles for Domingo Santana. Fernando Tatis had 31 doubles. Jeez. 16 homers for him. How do we do pitching-wise? So, 185 strikeouts. We struck out a lot. Mackenzie Gore was on fire. He's up to an 85. I should have brought him up way earlier. His ERAs were super low as well. We have three starting pitchers with ERAs below 3.2 or 3.2 or below that's awesome and then Cal Quantrill and Noah Syndergaard both at a 4-2-1 ERA but it's playoff time we got a wild card spot can we beat the Giants here we go I don't want to play it I want to simulate it actually let's quick manage Fulmer's on the mound this is the lineup looks very very solid Senzel's gonna start at third Interesting. Who made that call? Tatis is up to an 83. Senzel. I mean, do I really want Tatis on the bench? I'm going to start Tatis at third base. Um, Orlando. Who's starting at shortstop? Jorge Polanco. Who's starting at second then? Labor Tour. He's up to an 88. All right. Hey, I'll let the CPU handle that. Here we go. We are down 3-1 early. We got to get some runs on the board. We're getting hits. We're not getting runs, though. Down by one. And they're going to make it a 4-2 game. Top of the ninth. Is there... Can I jump in? I don't know if I can jump in. Oh, I enter game. Square. All right. We're going to enter the game real quick. I don't know what difficulty it's on. So I might be able to bring it back here and continue forward in the playoffs. We'll certainly see. Here we go. Andrew Miller. Forgot the Giants had him. And here's Fernando Tatis. 0 for 3. We put him in. Okay, PCI is kind of small. Difficulty might be kind of high. I can actually check what it is. He's throwing balls. This is absolutely not rookie. I'll tell you that. We are playing on Hall of Fame difficulty. All right. I'll keep it. Top 9. Down by 2. No outs. Got to start off strong. And he's hit Manuel Margo. Oh my goodness. Margo is not too happy about it. Here is Jorge Polanco. This is a decent matchup for us. This is a crazy last inning. Polanco's going to swing. And that is going to be a line drive to left field. That is the game. And we will not go further in the playoffs. But we're going to do one more season. Cubs have defeated the Mariners in the 2021 World Series. The Mariners are in the 2021 World Series. Interesting. As far as retired players go, no one really for us. Cano and Miggy are Hall of Famers. And then we have to deal with Freddie Freeman and Felipe Rivero. As well as getting a lot of new staff in. Sano goes to the Mariners. Maybe hope helping them get back to the World Series. As I want Mike Matheny. Can I afford him, is the question. McCullers goes to the Red Sox. Javi Baez to the Phillies. Trevor Story to the Rangers. Jose Quintana to the Blue Jays. Cubs have traded for Corey Kluber. Jay Hay and Miguel Acevedo are headed to the Indians. Travis Shaw to the Reds. Byron Buxton to the Marlins. Angels have signed Corey Seager. This trade, I'm trading for James Paxton. J.D. Martinez. And Luis Camposano are on the move. James Paxton and Hunter Dozier are headed to San Diego. And now I have free reign, free range to trade Cal Quantrill, who I no longer need, who has a ton of value. Yuana Cespedes has been traded to the Dodgers. Matt Strom and Eddie Rosario are headed to the Twins. And with this trade, I am trading for another starting pitcher, Shohei Otani from the 
Los Angeles Angels, Orlando Arcia, who I don't need anymore. Alex Dickerson and Cal Quantrill, who I also don't need anymore. I don't need any of these players. In order to get Shohei Otani, that trade is going through. And uh, look at our rotation. It is disgusting. Fulmer, Otani, Lamette, Paxton, Syndergaard. I, I guess I don't need... I guess I don't need six of them. <laughs> I'm going to make this trade with the Reds. Bringing in William Rutherford, Zach Weiss, and Charlie Blackman. James Paxson, Gabriel Arias, and Michael Geddes is going to get it done. We made a, a bunch of interesting moves again. But the starting pitcher rotation is set. The bullpen is nice as anything. El Gary, Freddie Freeman, really good backups as well. Tatis can go back to shortstop. Or Torres can play something. Polanco can maybe play third. Actually, I'd probably play Torres at third base. Move Tatis to shortstop. Actually, Tatis can stay. I'm going to move Glaber Torres to shortstop. Let's put him there at shortstop. Where he is. A. He's an 84 overall. Not too bad. Tatis out there. Left field. I mean, what do we even do here? We've got great depth. It's going to be a fight to see who's going to start. Joe Adele's potential went down. What is up with that? It's an 88 now. I don't like that very much. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see who starts. Charlie Blackman is going to be at least great depth if he doesn't start. Which he probably should get a corner outfield spot. And left field would be the perfect spot for him. He's not going to ride the bench. I'll tell you that right now. He's not. I kind of forgot we got him, to be honest. He's going to start in left field. And then I will move... Joe Adele to right, because he's actually got an arm. He's got a cannon on him as well. He's developed really, really nicely. And he, in right field, is... A 74 overall. People are worse overalls in right. I don't... I don't know. But it is, it is a really good team. This is a team that has to make the playoffs. It has to. And hopefully not a wild card spot this time. And an actual, like, you know, a sick record. We win the division. This is going to be sick. Rule 5 draft shouldn't matter at all. Here we are. I'm not going to take anybody. There's no reason to. Ooh, I'm at, that's wrong, actually. I'm going to take Blake Rutherford just because I can. Why would I not? He's actually developing for once. I didn't think anyone like him would be there. And uh, that's going to be it for us. All right, here we go. Fresh season. This is the team. Starting pitching is uh, overall, I would say, amazing. If I had to describe it with one word, I would say it's amazing. Very, very good. Jose Torres, Jose Alvarado. I mean, our bullpen is stacked as well. Look at Vesperis is up to an 82. He's, he looks really, really solid. Closer is still going to be Felipe Rivero. We got El Gary behind the plate. Freddie Freeman. Sean Jimenez is a 78. Look at his contact. Look how high that is. Second baseman is going to be Jorge Polanco. Nick Senzel, I guess, is up to an 82, so maybe he'll start at third. We got Fernando Tatis behind him. Glaber Torres at shortstop. Charlie Blackman in left is up to a 90 all of a sudden. Manuel Margot is a 91. Luis Robert is a 77. Domingo Santana is 84. And then Joe Adele at a 78. I might want to actually try Fernando Tatis at shortstop. See what his overall jumps up to. Where's the infield option? There we go. Um, so at shortstop, he is 77. So perhaps he'd be better off at, uh, at third base. So he's going to stay over at third base. Hopefully he gets better. This is a stacked, stacked team. Let's go ahead and simulate to the regular season, and then I will see you guys. I'm going to skip the draft. I'm going to see you guys for the playoffs. We're going to simulate the season. All right, yeah, this is absolutely a playoff team as we have gone 97 and 65 and winning the division. So uh, we're going to go ahead and check out the statistics and see how we did overall. Domingo Santana crushed 44 home runs. My God, Freddie Freeman, 31. Elgari, 31. Charlie Blackman, 27. 
RBIs, only one over uh, 100. That was Domingo Santana with 106. Still on bases, 26 for Manuel Margot. Averages, we have a couple players over 300. Sean Jimenez is an absolute monster. Domingo Santana, Manuel Margot, very close. Freddie Freeman, close. William Rutherford, very close. And these guys, not all these guys had uh, tremendous plate appearances. El Gary didn't hit very well. Um, pitchers, 240 strikeouts for Shohei Otani. ERA was very low for all of our starters. You know, at three, pretty much. And then the bullpen was, uh, overall, I would say solid. Rafael Vesperas was dog shit. 18.47 ERA uh, in his appearances. In six innings, he let up, I'm going to say, too many runs. 13 runs. That was, that was tough that he was doing that. But uh, let's go ahead and simulate to... Um, National League Division Series. We're gonna be gonna take. Uh, we're gonna be taking on the Cubs, and we beat the Cubs. I gotta stop simulating. Whoa, it's going way too fast. We swept the Cubs after a close series with the Giants, and let's go ahead and see what's gonna happen in the World Series. Padres, Indians. Padres up 3-0 in the series. Can we go for the sweep over the Indians? We're gonna quick manage. We're gonna come out here. What do we want to win the World Series in? Glaber Tour as we're looking at. Oh, absolutely. Digital Camo Blues away. Thor on the mound. This is the lineup we're going with. Shauna Men is going to start. Interesting. It's a loaded roster. We got Senzel on the bench. He's up to an 87. This is a team that can slap B. Here we go. Tatis 0 for 3. Why can he not hit? All we need is the go-ahead run and then shut it down. It's raining here in Cleveland. Still packed house. Oh, Tatis crushes it to right field. Get out, ball. It is gone. That is the lead. Fernando Tatis. Homers. And we are up 5-4. Take another look. Fastball. Up and away. And that's exactly where it was driven. Up and away. Gone. Crush that. Strike two. Let's finish him with a slider. This is game over. Strike three. And the San Diego Padres are World Series champions. A little bit of trouble there in the last inning. El Gary just took out Felipe. Felipe Vazquez, I guess. But yes, in my second one, we have actually won the World Series. Had a little help from me, of course. We, you know, we were going to sweep, and the team was sick. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Also, I didn't know this pops up, so this pops up. But that now, now we're leaving. Take it easy. This shit don't run well.